thank you for joining us. I have a very, very dear soul and sister with me, Emilisa. Emilisa and I have known each other, and I have been blessed to be with her on her journey, um, both as um, both as counseling and mentorship, and as well as my role as coach. And it has just been such an amazing blessing to see what she's been going through, the different stages that she goes through, what's worked for her, what hasn't worked for her, what her pitfalls have been. It's just, it's been so great to see her growth and development through this. So Emily said, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so honored that you said yes. Hi. <laughs> so yes, you were telling me this amazing story. And what's so amazing is the contrast to the majority of people's experiences, including yours and mine when it comes to the um, the treatment of people with mental health uh, conditions, specifically the condition that you and I have both been diagnosed with, PNES, when it comes to the medical uh, community, very specifically in the emergency uh, department and with EMS, our experience with EMS. So today I am so excited to share that there is a contrast, something to say, hey, it's not all like this. And for me, what's more important is it doesn't have to stay like this. So right. please do share us what happens uh, to as much or as little as you're comfortable with. I was over at my boyfriend's house, and he knows I have PNES. He knows how to deal with them, and he knows that we only really call emergency services just to check on how I'm doing, um, never to give me medication or take me in. Um, so can I pause for a second? Do. Yeah. How do you communicate that to the EMS? Just for people who, who don't know how to properly right. or effectively do this, what, okay. what do you have set up so that doesn't happen so, with your protocol? I have an emergency contact in my phone, like emergency ID, and they can go to when they turn on my phone and it says my name, my age, um, when I was born, my weight and what I have and things I'm allergic to. So there I have that I have PNES and that there is no uh, epileptic medication to be given to me. Um, and that that's pretty much it. So that's awesome. they saw Thank that. Mm -hmm. And my boyfriend explained to them, you know, no medications to be given. And the paramedic that was there with us um, told us, yeah, I don't know why, but he was looking up into seizures a couple days before he got me and came across PNES and studied it and really looked into it. And, he, you know, he educated himself on it. And a few days later, got the call and it was me, uh, someone with PNES. So he knew exactly what to do. And in that moment, I was so tense because I didn't want any medication. But when he explained to me that he knew exactly what I had and how there was no medication, all he had to do was make sure I was okay. Um, I felt at ease, you know, I was, I felt just so comfortable and safe. Hmm. So that's, yes, yeah. that's that. so encouraging. That is so encouraging. So let me ask you a question. What was his attitude like towards you? He was very kind and patient. He was, he like literally knew what was going on. He was like, I have to treat her with patience and understand yeah. that, is this something she can't control? Yes, that's so awesome. And the power of understanding has to come with education. I, I'm okay. such a firm believer, and I, I do truly believe that there is a, a movement coming for compassion. And compassion has to come from understanding that we are, we are the same human beings that uh, minus the medical need sometimes because sometimes there is a medical need and actually there's a medical cause so we can't be all seen alike and those of us who are not um, triggered medically but right. emotionally psychologically that we are suffering we're suffering equally as bad as those who have a medical condition and so our hearts are, are very they're in their hands we are very vulnerable so i i couldn't believe it i had one experience similarly uh when i was in the hospital one time i was admitted i had a seizure in the hospital this is the second time it happened it's so strange i wasn't even there for that but i had a seizure in the hospital they admitted me and um you know that thing that they do where they rub your chest? Yeah. Yeah. 
that it hurts, hurts so bad. Yes. And I, that my, um, how my seizures played out is that I was in there. I was just locked in. So everything that was happening, I could hear, I could smell, I could, I knew everything that was happening. And my pain level was, was decreased so badly that even if you touched me, it would be very painful. So the problem was that in this in a circumstance, that's all they were taught. That's all the education that was supplied to them is that this is not, this is not real seizures. Right. And so they applied that. And of course, because it's not a, a brain, it's not an epileptic seizure, but it is still something that is out of our control. And of course, so when he did it, I didn't respond. And so I could hear everything that's going on, even though I wasn't able to respond. And the person next to them said, move over, I'll show you how to do it. And he did it twice as hard. And the pain that was inflicted on me that day was so excruciating, but I'm completely locked in my body at that time. So I can't tell them, please stop hurting me. I can't, I couldn't control it. So when I did, when I was able to come out and communicate, I told the nurse who, who had come in and who was on shift that time, and I said, please don't let them hurt me anymore. I can hear them. I can, I can feel what they're doing and it causes me so much pain, but I can't stop them from hurting me. Mm -hmm. And the next time she said, I'll make sure that they, that doesn't happen again. And the next time I had that, I, get, I don't know if she educated herself or I, I had a friend with me who was stopping people from giving me medication and things mm -hmm. like that. And when uh, the next time I had a seizure, I don't know how she got the information or what she did, but her countenance was so gentle. And she, because she knew that I could hear her, because I had communicated that to her, she was talking to me through it. It's okay. And that's what triggered my memory was that you told me that the man, while you were having your second seizure, he was saying to you, you're safe. It's okay. Just you know, breathe, like all these positive things. And I was so encouraged. It just flooded my, my heart with hope. Nice. So I, I'm so excited by your story because both, but here's the contrast. Tell me that story that, that happened um, previously, the one where, where you weren't treated so well. Oh yeah. That was Thanksgiving of, I think of last year. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving. I, that was one of the strongest seizures I had where I woke up after and I didn't, I wasn't speaking. Um, I remember in the ambulance, they, they knew my name, they knew it, but they instead were making fun of me and were calling me everything but my name. Um, and were telling me to stop faking it and to just wake up and you know, they, they were like teasing me with, yeah, we're going to put an IV in, so we know it's going to hurt, so we know you're going to stop seizing. Um, and that, 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 that was a really bad experience. I was, I couldn't stop it. I don't understand who, who gave them this wrong education that if you inflict pain on us, that we will stop. And if you're watching and you're part of the medical community, community and you know, please pass this on. We have zero control over our body's movement at that time. We, sadly, in my case, in Emilisa's case, uh, Emilisa actually has two. She has a medical uh, component and she has an emotional component. component. So we have zero control and inflicting pain on us just further traumatizes us. So if you are in the position of, of uh, power or you have the ear of somebody who is in your community, please don't think that you don't have any power or, or that you are too small or low in the totem pole that it will make a difference. You can advocate for us. You can, and if you're watching this and you have PMEA seizures, communicate this. We have no control inflicting harm on us, only further traumatizes us. And there are a couple things that you can do. You can talk to the PR of your hospital, your local hospital, and you can, and I recommend that you do this in writing and not an attack because as you see, Emilise and I are just sharing our experiences. We are sharing the positive experiences that we have and we're also sharing the sad negative experiences that we've had. And these are very important. There's a few things. If you replace condemnation, which is really what you're saying when you're saying you're faking, you're, you're 
labeling us. If you replace condemnation with curiosity, and I had this other experience, it had nothing to do with PNES, but I was in the emergency room for pain. And the man who was helping me, he was a nurse, and I told him about my seizures just because I was in so much pain that I didn't want to have a seizure because of my pain level at that point. And if, in case I did, I wanted somebody to be aware. And he told me he'd never heard of anything like that before. And he allowed me to share with him a little bit about it. So he approached it with curiosity, not condemnation. He fortunately had not been miseducated about applying pain and he was a clean slate. So I, I'm, that's one of the things that I'm so hopeful about and that I want a movement about is, is proper education in the medical community is reaching their hearts to let them know that we are people. And yes, back in the day, for some reason, when medicine split and they separated psychology from medicine and they stopped seeing the whole person, because as I shared once, people who have heart attacks, how many of it is because of their own psychological health? or lack thereof. People with strokes, how many is it because of what is going on internally? So where this happened, I have no idea. And why it happened, the fact is that's where we're at. So if somebody comes in and they're on this side and they can't, you really can't help them because you're equipped with medicine, med <laughs> because you're equipped with medicine versus the psychological health still treat them like a human being, still give them the dignity and the respect that anybody, you want your mother to receive, your sister, your daughter, your son to receive. So Emilisa, I am so, first of all, I'm so proud of you for sharing this. I'm so proud of you for taking this. This journey of overcoming is, it's not a, an easy one. It's not to be taken lightly. And every day you face it, every day you wake up and you're saying, I'm fighting this. And so every day you are addressing the issues that come up. You're not running and hiding from them. So I just want to say, I'm so proud of you. I'm so encouraged by you. Um, you know, you're, you're coming to this age where you are becoming one of those people who are going to be the social influencer uh, that is going to tip the scales in the favor of humanity, of compassion. And it's just such a great honor for me to know you. Thank you. I'm, I'm super honored to get to share this story. I, I honestly feel like people needed to hear this. Yeah. Tell me, tell everybody a little bit about the activism that you have been doing. You shared a little bit with me as far as what you're doing to bring awareness for PNES. So I want to say a few months back, I officially shared my story with social media on my Instagram page. And I did like a little bunch of like a bunch of hashtags, PNES and, you know, awareness for seizures. And um, I had a lot of people I had over, I think it was over 100 people that viewed my story and texted me. I mean, really young people, older people who were like, oh, my God, I have the same thing. I, I didn't know other people suffered from it, too. And reached out to me. I had somebody in Chicago. Um, I had another girl. I think it was in Alabama. He was around my age. Um, I just took it to social media and I wanted people who were around me who saw me every day and didn't see this. Um, this is what I go through. This is what it is. This is how you treat it. This is how um, we feel or maybe just what I feel, but I can hear you or th this is what it looks like. And I would share uh, videos of my seizures, which is really hard because yeah. they're not the prettiest videos, but I shared them so people around me um, could know what it looks like and what to do. So I shared that. And I mean, nearly all my followers know what I have yes. and what to do. So yes. a trickle can become a river. I mean, that, that's the most important message is no matter how small your circle is, one person talks to another person. And so getting the right message, not just talking, but getting the right message out is so important, empowering people with the steps of what they can do, how they can help is so important, is crucial really for everybody, and it, not just within this community. Because this community, like I said, it comprises of, of the medical 
as well as um, the mental, psychological, spiritual. So empowering people with all ranges of tools. Um, so one thing that you learned in this situation is that you had some allergies that you did not know of before, but as a result of, they came to the surface and they made themselves pretty evident. <laughs> So again, you have the, the medical as well as the psychological, and neither of them were you really aware of beforehand, before you took that step into this journey and said, okay, we're going to figure this out. And no, this is not going to be my destiny, which is so cool because you have an amazing destiny ahead, ahead of you. So Emily, so can you share with us a little bit? I know that you're, you're still in your journey of overcoming but you are so inspiring the fact that you have not given up hope and you see your future. And it's so clear to you that this is not something that's going to deter your course. Right. So yeah, I still am on my journey. I still am having seizures. Um, not as much as I used to, but I still am. Um, but I didn't, I really didn't let that stop me. I'm, I'm still studying and I want to be a nurse. So I want to bring awareness and if I can bring it into my work and let people around me at my job know what it is that I have and what it is that other patients could have, that would be, I mean, amazing. So I want to be a nurse and I have not stopped because I want to bring awareness to this and let everyone know what it is and how to treat it. That is so exciting. That is so exciting. Well, before we go, I want to leave everybody with some empowering tools. One, um, if, if the only thing you hear from this video is that Emilisa sh is sharing her story and that your story is powerful also. Whether you have social media, whether you have friends, your story is important because again, trickles become rivers. The second thing, is that not every medical professional is, is in this miseducation. There are some that have not yet gotten the words PNES into their head. So let's not demonize the medical community and let's, let's have this hope that we can make a difference because we are making a difference. And Emilisa and I are both, um, we're witness to that. If we appre approach them, with kindness and understanding that they don't know what we're dealing with and patience. It's so important. And I know this is a big tall order because so many of us have received negative treatment, but just as we want to be treated as individuals, let's go ahead and do that for the medical community. Let's treat them like individuals and let's put our hope and inspiration into this. And the last thing, if you would like to share your story, if you would, I would love for you to leave a comment below. If you have hope to share, I would love for you, I'd love to interview you. I'd love to, to have you have that platform to do that. So please uh, email me at christine at transferoutpnes.com or leave a comment below. Please do not leave your email. I don't want that to be compromised. Don't leave your email in the comments. I appreciate everybody's uh, support. I so appreciate people's willingness, those who come on and share their story. I mean, this is the world. It goes up and it is viewed by the world. So I have such appreciation and awe uh, for those who come on and who are um, really just honest about their journey. So Emily said, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to, to see what happens in five years, four years, two months. I just, I love watching your journey. Well, thank you for having me, so. All right, well, next time we're going to have Jesse Walker, who is going to talk about the physical components of our healing and the importance of treating our bodies as vessels of health. So I wanna pray God's richest blessings over you. One thing that I know is important is that you make choices in your life and then you step out into it. So I encourage you to make that choice and step into it.